um, white people are out there, uh, Muslims, we've seen Jews, Christians, all, people of all, this is not a political issue, this is a human rights issue, and that's why you see all types of human beings, when no matter what color they are, no matter what country they're from, no matter what religion they are, they're out there with people marching against this police brutality. And I think all of it bubbled to the top now that this George Floyd killing on that went viral that we all saw was a public day lynching. And the fact that people are experiencing what we're, what we're experiencing during this coronavirus crisis, in the last 10 weeks, 40, more than 40 million Americans have filed for unemployment. Uh, each week, it's been 10 weeks. Each week, 4 million plus have filed for unemployment. There has never been a time in this country where 1 million people in one week have filed for unemployment. That's where we are. And it's even worse because in that same time frame, SC, in that same 10 weeks, billionaires have amassed close to a half a trillion dollars and added to their wealth, while 40 million, tens of millions of Americans are losing their jobs and have lost their jobs and are unemployed and who don't know how they're gonna pay their rent. This has, all these things have been bubbling to the top of the surface in this country for a very long time. Um, we saw it back in 2008, 2009 uh, with the Wall Street, uh, with the, with the Wall Street uh, failings uh, the greed, people went out and protested. Yeah. This is, there's a lot of things that this country needs to fix. We have a veneer, a beautiful veneer that a lot of people don't see past and a lot of people intentionally don't see past. We, we overlooked a lot of things in this country. We overlooked our past and that's one of the reasons why we can't even understand why we are where we are today because we whitewash everything. We've whitewashed all of our wars, um, we've whitewashed um, torture, we've whitewashed uh, slavery, the Civil War. People, there's a, a lot of people in this country who believe the Civil War was not about slavery. When in fact, you look at the, or the, or the states that seceded from the Union, and a majority of them mentioned slavery several times, multiple times, some in cases dozens of times, in their secession letters. The, the, the president, vice president of the Confederacy uh, discussed how the normal condition of the black man was to be subjugated by the white man. And when they lost the Civil War, then the narrative changed to, oh, they were just patriots or they were rebels. I went to school in Tennessee. I I'm from California. I've never seen a rebel flag in my life other than Dukes of Hazzard until I, in, in real life until I got to Tennessee. And honestly, I, I didn't know much. I didn't know what the Confederacy was about at that age. I was more concerned about learning about ancient Egypt and Greece, and that was my thing. And as I learned more, and I heard from people in Tennessee, teammates and friends, to even to this day, and we have these discussions, and it's funny to me, uh, but, you know, they look at the Confederate flag as solely about being a rebel, solely about fighting tyranny from your government. And that education is intentional. That has been whitewashed throughout this country where we whitewash a number of things. And when these issues that have, that have uh, been going on for decades and sometimes hundreds of years, uh, eventually they bubble to the surface, right? It's, it's like it's, uh, you're boiling water and it's hot. These, these, these conditions are hot and eventually it's going to bubble to the surface. And that's what we've seen with these, George, with these George Floyd uh, protests and these, I, I wouldn't say they're riots, I'd call them rebellions. And I, I'd call them uprisings, because uh, that's exactly what they are. And one thing Martin Luther King talked about since he's also been whitewashed, um, because he's been used now as someone who, um, someone who would, uh, you know, was, was this, was this well-loved person who, who said to be nonviolent and everyone got along because he said to be nonviolent. No, he was murdered. He was assassinated yeah. because he said to be nonviolent, because he wanted to work with poor people and people of all colors, uh, because he wanted to bring about the changes in this country. And that's what a lot of people are protesting about. And I saw this tweet from Clint Smith 
the third, um, who is uh, who I've gotten to know, and very intelligent guy, um, just graduated from Harvard. Congratulations. He tweeted something to the effect of uh, that 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 really caught my eye. He tweeted something to the effect of uh, people. He said people claim that they would have been abolitionists during slavery. And he said, but I propose to you, essentially he was saying, I propose to you to look at your actions now. It's easy to look back in the past and say, you know, what you would have done, but what are you doing, what are you doing right now is what you would have done back in the abolition days because this is the same fight, right? It's the same type of fight for civil rights, for human rights. Uh, this is not uh, left-wing ideology or right-wing ideology. This is not a political ideology. This is a human rights issue. And that's why we've seen so many people around the world in different countries and different cities around the world have been protesting for George Floyd and against police brutality in the United States. Well, I want